Homage to Glorious Vajrasattva All things emerging from the state of evenness unborn are but the great display of primal wisdom, non-dual and illusory. Through never being parted from this unborn state, I bow down to the nature of my mind. The king, who from the first is self-arisen, that you may understand the perfect teaching of the conqueror that all things are by nature the two aspects of illusion here I have distilled the sappy essence of the sutras tantras pith instructions listen I shall set it forth as I myself experience it. The ground's expanse beyond all change. The vast sky of the nature of the mind is empty, luminous, and free from mind's elaboration. Therein, like the sun, the moon, and all the stars, the pure, unstained phenomena of Buddhahood are present of themselves. The threefold Kaya, never sundered from the five primordial wisdoms, and all the qualities of luminosity naturally complete. This primal, fundamental, natural state is said to be the entirely pure illusion of the ground. Within this ground, through co-emergent ignorance, like sleep that brings forth dreams, which are like clouds of momentary illusion, and through conceptual ignorance, the mind impaired by apprehension of duality, where there is no duality, there appear the various false appearances of the six migrations similar to dreams.
though non-existent, yet appearing still. Beings feel different pains and pleasures, habits gained through long, protracted time. Places, bodies, property, and more are but their mind's experience. Joys and pains, the wages of both good and evil deeds, resemble drawings traced in varying forms. And from one delusion, many more are spawned. Apprehended thus in multiplicity, these false appearances arise in seamless continuity. Emo, existence is, by nature, like a dream. Within the single nature of the self-arisen mind, through ignorance's sleep, a dualistic subject-object apprehension of false appearances occurs. These dream visions, manifold and various, are nothing other than the mind itself. Illusions that arise through false perception. This the conqueror himself has said. To those intoxicated by Deitura, various things appear, hallucinations one and all. Through the intoxication likewise of the sleep of ignorance, the six migrations manifest to the deluded mind. Now, therefore, you should understand they are not truly there. From deluded thought derives perception equally deluded, and thence delusory appearances. Not true, not false, not both. Beyond the ordinary mind, 
they should in truth be named awareness, self-arisen, self-cognizing. They are without identity, without existence, a vast expanse where all extremes subside. Know them to be similar to space. The wisdom mind of the victorious ones. Things are dreamlike. In the very moment they appear, no intrinsic being do they have at all. And yet their features are not lost. To their appearance, there's no hindrance. Carefully investigate these false and momentary forms. In every aspect, empty. They are neither false nor true. Not existent, yet not non-existent. beyond all ontological extremes. They are like space beyond both thought and word. Know that they are pure primordially. Thus, by means of such a view, you gain clear understanding that all things in samsara and nirvana are like dreams. I shall now explain how, through your meditation, you will bring this into your experience. Adopt a cross-legged posture on a pleasant seat. Take refuge and engender bodhicitta. Now think. Intensely meditate. That in the state of emptiness, of perfect evenness, all things appear like magical illusions.
Then visualize above your head, upon the center of a lotus, and on disks of sun and moon, amid a host of deities and dakinis, your own root teacher, never separate from the teachers of the lineage. Make offerings and praise, and pray that you may train successfully in seeing all things as a dream. Then yourself and all phenomenal existence dissolve in light that melts into your teacher. Rest then for a moment in a space-like state of meditation. Blessings, realization thus will naturally occur. Then meditate according to the main part of the practice. Tell yourself repeatedly, grow used to it, that outwardly all mountains, valleys, regions, towns, the earth, fire, water, wind, and space, sentient beings and the rest, the five sense objects, form, sound, texture, smell, and taste. And inwardly, the body, faculties of sense, and consciousness are nothing more than dreams. All past things occurring till today are mental objects, just like last night's dreams. Today's appearances, perceived yet non-existent, are but the mind's delusion. They're just like what you dreamt about last night and what you'll dream about tonight. The things that will appear tomorrow and the night that follows after are but dreams in store.
Remember this, that all things that appear, the joy you want, the pain that you prevent, are simply dreams. Not even for an instant should you think them true. When moving, sitting, eating, walking, speaking, tell yourself with undistracted mindfulness, it's all a dream. Whatever may appear, whatever you may do or think, Never lose the thought that it is but a dream. All is without true existence. Intangible. Uncertain. Evanescent. Insubstantial. Indefinable. Train yourself in this great state in which there's nothing to be grasped. Through thinking that the object to be apprehended is a dream, a false appearance. The cognition of the apprehended is removed. And the apprehender too, by implication. For if the object is negated, so too is the subject. This mind that estimates appearances as dreams. If now and then you really search for it, out or in or somewhere in between, there's no way to identify it. No point 
on which to set your bearings. There is a state of openness, like boundless space. Devoid of the wild frenzy of your memories and plans. Awareness, luminous and empty. Free of all conceptual construction. Arises of its own accord. When the apprehender ceases, the apprehended also is no more. When the subject has withdrawn, all holding of an object vanishes. Then there is no link with an appearing object. The framework of discernment falls away. Then there's simply primal wisdom. Non-dual, self-arisen. When indeed you realize and grow used to this, because the apprehended and the apprehender are averted, the assumption that the object and the mind are real subsides, and an experience then arises where there is no apprehension of appearing things as being this or that. All that appears arises rootless and primordially empty. This is the pristine fundamental nature. By degrees, the apprehension of appearing objects as being truly this or that, that is, impure dependent nature, is arrested, and pure dependent nature is then actualized. It is like the vanishing of deluded dreams at the moment when one wakes from sleep. Then, in the primordial ground, manifest enlightenment occurs.
Hallucinations are not present in the past. They are not present in the future. It is only now that they appear. They are perceived, yet from the moment of appearing, they are without existence. Non-existent, they appear to the deluded mind according to its habits. And yet by nature, they're primordially pure. They resemble dreams. When you are not sleeping, when you are awake, the things appearing in your dreams do not exist. Only in your sleep do they occur. And in the moment they appear, they have no real existence. In just the same way, you should understand the non-existent things that yet appear have neither ground nor root. Meditating strongly in this way by day, at night as you are sinking into sleep upon a comfortable bed, stretch out on your right side as the Lord lay down before he passed beyond all sorrow, breathing very slowly and with steady gaze. Visualize within your heart a crystal sphere in which there is a letter A. White in color and ablaze with light. It is the size of your own thumb, becoming even smaller as you concentrate on it. Without distraction, bear in mind that it is like a dream. In this way, dreamlike luminosity will manifest.
At first, when you have frightening nightmares, recall that they are dreams. Your fear will dissipate at once. To recognize one's dreams as dreams is to be concentrated, it is said. While in the state of dreaming, this practitioners should understand. Train then to recognize that all dreams are unreal. Appearances of things without existence are no more than the mind's delusion. Dreamlike and ungraspable. Since they are neither true nor false, know then that they transcend the reach of ordinary mind. Concerning the assumption and the transformation of a form while dreaming. Assume the form of Brahma, of the Buddha, of a Bodhisattva, or of something else, according to your wish. Thus train yourself and place yourself within their unreality. Then, in successive moments, change your form according to your wish from Brahma into Indra or else from a divine into a human being. Meditate upon the unreality of all such forms.
Then multiply all such appearances. A hundred, or a thousand, or a millionfold. Train yourself in mastery of antidotes that subdue all that is to be subdued. Then you may journey in your dreams to pure fields, various lands and realms, to Akanishta and wherever you may wish. And there you will behold the Sugatas. Listen to their stainless words and train yourself in wisdom, concentration, clouds of Dharanis. Through your training, thus with mindfulness, continually, both day and night, all this will come to pass. For this is the unfailing quality of your awareness, which thus will be made manifest. All this is the essential pith of teachings most profound. Meditating thus by day and night upon your dreams. You will escape the snare of thinking that phenomena are truly real. Through fences, walls and mountains, you will pass unhindered. You will gain unnumbered wondrous powers, clairvoyance, concentrations, innumerable experiences you'll have and realizations, and sublime primordial wisdom will arise.
you will come at last to the primordial expanse, the nature of the mind, and gain the dreamlike twofold goal, the Dharmakaya for your own sake, and the Rupakaya for the sake of others. Meditate, therefore, that all is like a dream.